active transport with cell membranes. So the idea here is going to be, I'm just going to kind of extend, you know, extend this out, but this is the membrane. We'll draw on, I'll draw on some of the tails a little bit later, but I'm going to just add in the um, transporter molecule, something like this, right? And then you have the tails. I wouldn't have ones here. And then this is kind of open, so you can kind of get around there. So this is the configuration here. With the active transport, we said that there, there are proteins, or, well, first off, we talked about carriers. We said carrier proteins were ones that allowed some molecule to come into the membrane. The membrane then changes shape and then allows that molecule to move from one side of the membrane to another. If this was being done with a concentration gradient, okay, so again, a concentration gradient. is our high concentration to low concentration. Let's just, so if this was the high concentration side, this is the low concentration side, it's moving across the membrane, that, that's diffusion. And a carrier can do that and it can be very specific. Otherwise it could move just through like a channel and it's kind of more static. We so said that was passive, right? This is kind of, kind of moving. Now, what else can happen is, I said, active transport. So sometimes cells want to bring in more sugars because they want to use it for nutrients. Sometimes cells will produce waste, which they will do, and then they want to get rid of the waste. And if the environment that they want to move that molecule to already has a high concentration, then they have to go against the concentration gradient. So going from high to low would release energy But to go from low to high would require energy. And that energy can come from a number of different places, but the main place it's gonna come from is ATP. So ATP is gonna be the molecule that cells are going to use for energy. And we're gonna call this active transport. So it doesn't have to be all the time using ATP. There's other ways of getting it. It has to get energy from somewhere. So active transport requires energy. ATP is only one type of that energy. So there's other things that can be used for energy as well. We'll see some of them later in the class. But we're, we're gonna look at a specific example here of an active transport pump called the sodium potassium pump. So Na is so, the element sodium and K is the element potassium. Right, most of the elements, carbon C, hydrogen H, and these are, you know, there's no K here, and that's not, and they, that's because there's, there's Latin names, like natrium, you know, for, for sodium. So, um, but that's, those are the letter symbols for these, and I'm gonna use those over here. So the idea is, that cells are going to move sodium and potassium across a membrane, and that's going to be related to regulating their osmotic balance. So that is something that's going to happen. What they can do is they can take, let's say these are the sodium molecules. And this is an area where there's already a high sodium ion concentration. And here the sodium ion concentration is low, but what they're going to do is they're going to take three sodium ions all together, like one, two, three, all at once, and then they'll attach an ATP molecule to this protein. They'll break the ATP molecule. When the ATP is broken, you have ADP and phosphate. So again, what is ATP? Uh, well, well, we'll get into the A part, but the, the T is the is tri and then phosphate. And then ADP is the adenine diphosphate. So this means three, 
and this is two. So just kind of reducing a number. So now there's only two phosphates attached to this, but one of them has been broken off. The one that's broken off actually stays, instead of being thrown away, it stays attached. So the ADP goes away, but that phosphate stays attached here. Now what it would do is then pump one, two, three sodium ions into this area that already has a high sodium ion you know, concentration. At the same time, <clears throat> it can interact with potassium ions. Okay, so the potassium ions I'm going to represent here with this blue. So now the potassium ions will bind on this side. So it's the same protein. These aren't two different proteins. It's one protein, and it can bind, say, the, the sodiums on this side and the potassiums on the other side. But it only does two potassiums. So there's three sodium, two potassium. So there's a pump here. It's going to move three sodium in one direction, and then two potassium in the opposite direction. So what's going to happen is the potassium is now going to get pumped. So it's going to change shape back to this way. And when it does, the potassium is going to come out to this other side. The scenario is the same, where is this side is the low concentration side and the other is the high side, so they have to use energy again. In that case, the energy comes from this single phosphate. So it's still the, still the phosphate, so it's really just kind of one ATP being used to pump three sodium in one direction and two potassium in another. All right, that's referred to as a sodium-potassium pump. Now, one of the things that it's doing, you can kind of see by the numbers here, it's altering the charge of the environment, right? So this environment here continues to become more and more and more positive, right? And this environment, less so. So every time three positives are removed, they're only replaced with two positive charges. So gradually, this side becomes less positive than that side of the membrane. And that Charge difference is called membrane potential. So the tar charge difference across a membrane, as a term, it's called membrane potential. So this means that one side is maybe is more positive or, or, or more negative you know, than the other side. It all depends on what you're talking about specifically. Um, that can be used to store energy, kind of like a battery, kind of like charging a battery. You know, you have a high concentration of positive ions here and negative ions there, and then that creates this charge difference, and then it can, it's unstable, and it could be released, and it could be used to do energy in other ways as well. So it's almost like charging a cellular battery to some extent. But the other purpose of this is to offset osmosis, so that as water is diffusing across the membrane, the proteins can be moving ions to change the charge of the ions so that water doesn't want to move as much. So it's a way of kind of like, instead of directly affecting water, we're indirectly affecting water by changing the concentration of other things, of other ions or molecules, so that then water won't move across the membrane as much during osmosis. So it offsets osmosis and uh, is related to what's called osmotic balance. And so the sodium potassium pump is an important pump for osmotic balance. It creates a charge difference or membrane potential, uh, and it just uses one ATP to move three sodium in one direction and two potassium in the other. So those are just a bunch of little details about it, but, but that's kind of the key, at least, you know, what you need to know. Uh, again, more, more advanced classes would go more detail, but well, all we really need is some of the basics. You should be able to be familiar with it, like what is the sodium potassium pump? Oh, it's a transmembrane protein. That moves ions, there's specific ions, the numbers of them, two versus three, because that's related to the charge you know, difference called membrane potential. So we're gonna add here now a couple more things to the membrane. And those would still be transmembrane proteins. Okay, so the, 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 the carriers, the active transport pumps, the channels, the ion channels, the pores, all that stuff are transmembrane proteins. But what we've also found is that there are proteins called peripheral proteins. 
you can see this pro this is a protein here with uh, my squiggles are representing its three dimensionally folded shape. It's just a one side. It doesn't go all the way through. That's trans or across membrane. It goes across the membrane. Here, this does not go across. It's only one side. It could be either side. It could be the inside of the cell or the outside of the cell, but it's only on one side of the membrane and it's called a peripheral protein. And then there's lots of these. There's many, many, many peripheral proteins and they have a variety of different jobs. Some of them are enzymes and carry out activities, but the activity is actually happening at the surface of the membrane. So it's, it's not just free in the cell, it's kind of attached to something. Some of them are for binding or attaching cells to other cells, so they kind of recognize other things. So there's a whole variety of different roles for these peripheral proteins, but they're just another type you know, a kind of question you might get asked is, you know, what type of protein is important for active transport? You might have you know, multiple choice, a uh, transmembrane protein, you know, a peripheral protein, you know, something else I put. So obviously not peripheral because it doesn't go across the membrane. It can't do active transport because it can't move anything all the way across because it itself is not all the way across. You have to have a transmembrane protein to move things all the way across. So that's another thing just to add into our membrane. And then there's something else, just as far as structure goes, um, the, that what we call glycoproteins. So these are other proteins that have sugars attached to them, and they could be transmembrane or peripheral. So they could be, you know, either one of these. And like this. So if sugars are attached to the protein, then we refer to that as a glycoprotein, so or sugar protein. And usually they're sugar chains. And they're complex and they're you know attached to the surface of the membrane. But the key is here where I said peripheral proteins could be on either side, glycoproteins can only be on the outside. not the inside. And that's because their purpose is almost always in cell identity or cell adhesion. Okay, so if it's involved in cell sticking to other cells, that's on the inside, what good is that going to do? Uh, and if it's the identity of the cell, but it's like hidden inside the cell where no one else can see it, how, that doesn't help the cell identify itself to others or, or identify others. So it's on the outside. So these sugars, these glycoprotein sugars are always on the outside of the cell. They would never be on the inside. So if you were to do a drawing like this and I said, you know, draw a cell membrane and label all the parts. So you would need to have a phospholipid bilayer You would need to have cholesterol. You would need to have transmembrane proteins. You would need to have peripheral proteins. And you would need to have the sugars or the glycoproteins. Membranes can be made up of a, a really a lot of protein, right? So, and they vary. So they could be like 80% phospholipid, 20% protein, or almost the opposite. Or they could be like 80% protein and, and only 20% phospholipid. So there's a, a lot of different kinds of proteins because they're the ones carrying out the work. They're attaching cells to other cells. They're moving things across the membrane. The, you know, they're, they're allowing things just to move across the membrane by diffusion. Um, they're involved in signaling and as enzymes, and they're doing a whole variety of different jobs. So just make sure if you sketch out a little membrane that looks like this, you at least label these molecules. And to, as a note, remember that um, these go all the way through the membrane. These are only on one side of the membrane, but they could be either in or out. But this is the outside only. And the cholesterol, so remember, that could be within either, either membrane, that's either one too. So this is the one that's sort of unique. It can only be on one side, it can only be on the outside.
So that's it kind of for membrane structure and the function of the different molecules or the, the main molecules. There's a lot of other things that happen here. These are the main molecules associated with a membrane and transport across the cell membrane.